story that Sheikh uh, Shankidi Hafizahullah Ra'ah mentioned, uh, and this was Bil Medina. He said that an old man came to him complaining about family problems. The wife and the husband are always arguing with each other. The children are arguing with each other. No one's respecting anyone. The house, the, 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 the family is just in all sorts of chaos and disorganized. So he came to the sheikh and he complained to him of the family problems he's experiencing. The sheikh said to him, Yaqi, do you pray Salat al-Sunnah at home? Do you pray Salat al-Witr at home? He said to him, Allah, sheikh, I don't. What's this Witr? First time I hear of Witr. I don't know what this is. Can you explain to me what is Witr? The sheikh said to him, Salat al-Witr. It's the one rak'ah, the minimum one rak'ah that you pray before you sleep. The minimum one rak'ah. Allah Azza wa Jal, witr, Allah is witr. He's one, he's odd. And yuhibbu al-witr. He loves odd. Fa'awtiru. Pray al-witr. Awtiru ya ahl al-Qur'an. In another hadith, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is addressing the believers, people of the Qur'an. Pray witr before you sleep. For Shaykh, he taught him what witr is. Yani, this carries a huge significance in Islam. Al-witr. How can a believer sleep without praying al-witr? So then, uh, Sheikh said to him, go and increase sunnah prayers in your house and tell your family to pray sunnah prayers in the house. This old man went, after a few months, he came back to the Sheikh, excited, happy, saying, Wallahi, ya Sheikh, Wallahi, I took your advice and I prayed sunnah prayers at home and uqsimu billah, our problems have disappeared from the house. There is tranquility and peace and calmness in the house. It has restored once again yani, uh, organization and tranquility and love and mercy and compassion and gentleness has been restored once again in the house. The Sheikh said to him, Sadaqa Rasulullah. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has spoken the truth when he said, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ جَاعِلُ اللَّهُ مِن صَلَاتِهِ فِي بَيْتِهِ خَيْرًا That Allah Azza wa Shal would descend into a house an abundance of good if a person was to establish prayers in his house, what can you lose? What can you lose? When you pray sunnah prayers and extra nafil prayers in your house, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. My brothers and sisters in Islam, as-salat is therapy, therapy. You know, when people are uh, yani going through emotional illness, mental illness, they go to the psychologist, psychologist, recommends therapies, whether it's a CBT therapy or other therapies. Um, that's all good, no problems. I mean, if you need to do that, you, you go and do that at a, at a psychologist. But you know Islam, in Islam we have our own therapies. And one of the greatest therapies we have in Islam is as-salat. As-salat is a therapy to the heart, to the disturbed heart. It is a therapy. This is why in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا حَزَبَهُ أَمْرٌ فَزِعَ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ When he was worried about something, he would rush to as-salat. And you know, what's, what's interesting is that this is not a hadith he narrated. This is how the companions described him. What does that mean? Meaning they have seen enough from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that every time he is distressed, he prays. That's it. It's become a pattern. It's become a habit. We've seen it. So now they narrated it. Yani, how many times did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pray whenever he felt distress and worry? So many times that the companions observed it and mentioned it as a habit of his. And that's more powerful than if a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was to uh, narrate that. Allahu Akbar. For in prayer there is therapy. One I know of a Saudi Sheikh that passed away now, Rahimahullah. He used to treat the people bis sujood. Wallahi, he used to treat people bis sujood. Whenever a person used to come to him and complain about his worries and depression and sadness, Sheikh would say to him, pray and sit in sujood for half an hour. Stay in sujood for half an hour. Don't come up. That, that's your solution, bis sujood. Wud'i ila Allah or cry out to Allah Azza wa Jal. And he'd go and he'd do that. And it'd become a solution for people. A sujood is a solution for our anxiety, for our depression, for our fear, for our worry. 
Allah Azza wa Jal, he said in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقْ صَدْرُكْ We know that your heart experiences tightness. Your chest experiences tightness. Yani, this ayah is speaking about an emotional difficulty. بِمَا يَقُولُونَ Because of what they say. Yani, in, in context here, al-mushrikun, they were insulting Rasulullah and mocking him. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam felt pain because of this. So any pain you're experiencing, Allah knows about it. That's number one. Na'lamu, we know. Fasabbih bihamdi rabbik. Allah says, what's the surah? What do you do? What do you do, ya Rasul? Even if Rasulullah, the best of creation, was to experience, experience difficulty and calamity and hardship and, and, and goes through an emotional state, Allah says to him, Fasabbih bihamdi rabbik. Declare the perfection of Allah. Say subhanallah wa bihamdih. What does that mean? It means don't forget me. Don't forget my mention. Don't forget my dhikr. Sabbih bihamdi rabbik. Declare the praise of Allah. Say subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Repeat it. Keep repeating it until your heart is satisfied. And it's nourished. Bi dhikrillahi azza wa jal. Allahu Akbar. وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ And be from among those who, who, who do sujood. In other words, pray. Pray, pray, get up and pray every time you feel distress. <sighs> Allahu Akbar. والصلاه أصلا, الصلاة, the prayer, was given to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a gift. And he was given that command of the prayer in the year of sorrow and sadness after he had lost his beloved uncle Abu Talib. And after he had lost his beloved wife, Khadija radiallahu anha, and after he had gone to At-Ta'if and he was stoned, he had nothing. He was feeling down. When Nabi Allah Azza wa Jal took him up al-Isra al miraj and gave him al-Salat. It was a gift. It was a therapy to calm his heart, to bring him peace and tranquility and relaxation in his life. That's what a salat was for. So you, you cannot look at the salat as a burden or as a difficulty. La, that's the one who doesn't focus in his salat will see it as something heavy. Amma the believer, the one who has khushu' in his salat and connects with his salat and he knows this is when he's connecting with Allah and he feels that closeness to Allah, especially in his sujood. A salat upon such a person would be light, would be easy, would be the only way out of all difficulties in his life. Yes, for such a person, a salat would be the only way out of difficulties of life. That's where you relax. That's where you're satisfied. That's where your heart is nourished and fulfilled. The salat, Allahu Akbar, from the very moment of when you say Allahu Akbar, you know, and you hold your heart, you, you, you hold your hand and you hold it here on your chest, you know, as though you're controlling your heart and the emotions that are in there. You grab onto it. You say, Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater. Greater than everything that is happening around me. Greater than my emotion. Greater than my feelings. Greater than my financial difficulty and my stress. Greater than anything you can think of. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ As the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Adi ibn Hatim al-Ta'i رضي الله عنه When he explained to him the word Allahu Akbar He said to him وَهَلْ تَعْلَمُ شَيْءًا أَكْبَرُ مِنَ اللَّهِ Do you know anything greater than Allah? Meaning Allahu Akbar means there is nothing greater than Allah Allahu Akbar Now Allahu Akbar It settles the disturbed heart of the believers